Chapter 2. The Propagation of Rays The vibration of atomic components, the orbital rotation of the atomic components, the vibration of molecules, and the vibration of the whole molecular structure each produce their own individual propagated ray. These propagated rays are visible light and other kinds of waves and rays. Radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, gamma rays, etc. The atoms and molecules propagate rays since they are surrounded by a swarming field of Yaldans which move around the atom in all different directions, like bees buzzing around a hive. These Yaldans are much smaller than any atomic component by far. The density, sigma, of these swarming Yaldans increases as it approaches the surface of the atomic components and molecules. As the atomic components and molecules vibrate back and forth through their rest points, each atomic component, molecule, and molecular structure will have its own rest point. They will eject a group of Yaldans that are swarming around the atomic components and molecules. After each ejection from the oscillation of the atom, the swarming Yaldans will fill in the space around the atom within a certain amount of time. The Yaldans fill in the space around the atom since they are under pressure from the conservation of momentum. The momentum of Yaldans is conserved in space, my. The total momentum per cubic unit of Yaldans, including the momentum of the atoms and or molecules, will be the same anywhere in space. In this work, the term molecular components will be all the components in an atom. The atom as a whole, the molecules, and the molecular structure in the case of solids. This oscillation from the molecular components causes the production of propagated rays. Following will be a rough diagram representing an atom and the Yaldans that surround it, as well as the vibration of the atom and the ejection of propagated groups of Yaldans. All the atoms or molecules and substances are constantly vibrating and orbiting, releasing infrared, even though it may not be enough energy or momentum to produce visible light. According to the figure above, as the atom in the center is displaced from its rest point, it will propagate a group of Yaldans. The propagated ray is a constant series of groups of Yaldans that have been launched by the oscillation of an atom. The Yaldans in the propagated group will be consolidated into one cluster, since all will have the same velocity, speed, and direction. They will travel in a straight trajectory together as one whole group made of many Yaldans. When the atom receives a form of energy from an external source, the amount of Yaldans that swarm around the atom will also increase. As the atom oscillates, the number of Yaldans contained in the propagated group will also increase since there is a larger amount of Yaldans that swarm around the atom. The total mass of the propagated groups will be greater as more energy is received from the external source. According to the formula of simple harmonic motion, SHM, there is a maximum displacement, S max, a final maximum velocity from the oscillation of the atoms or molecules, Vm, and the mass of a molecular structure, or its components, m, with a constant, k. Simple harmonic motion formula. As these atoms or molecules oscillate, they will launch propagated groups of Yaldans with a final velocity of vp. Since these propagated groups have a velocity and a mass, then they must also have a momentum. The momentum of the propagated group depends on the final velocity, vp, and the summation of all the Yaldans' mass contained within that propagated group. The kind of ray emitted is determined by the momentum of several consecutive propagated groups that are produced within a certain time by the vibration of each molecular component contained within that substance. As a result, one substance will be able to produce more than one kind of propagated ray due to the variety of different molecular components within a substance, atomic components, the atom, the molecules, the molecular structure, the nuclei, etc., as well as the concentration of the swarming Yaldans around the atoms and molecules. Following are formulas and discussions based upon the propagated rays released from a substance. According to periodic simple harmonic motion, the frequency of the propagated groups from the oscillated atom or molecules is as follows. The velocity of the propagated ray. Then, after substituting the value of, from equation 2-1 into equation 2-2, substituting the value of f from the equation above into equation 2-4, where is the difference between two consecutive propagated groups? 
The propagated groups of Yaldans which are released from the vibration of the atomic component will have a momentum with a frequency wavelength according to the energy received, the density of the swarming Yaldans around the atomic component, and the atomic component's natural frequency. This model of propagated groups will satisfy and explain the phenomena of light's peculiar behavior as both a particle and a wave. The propagated groups behave as a wave since there is a periodic displacement between the consecutive groups, and they also have properties of a particle since the groups have a mass with a velocity, momentum. A conceptual example would be when a metal rod becomes heated by an external source of energy. The rod begins to emit the color red, at first, and as the metal becomes hotter, it will begin to emit the colors that have a higher energy, higher momentum, than the red light. Energy and momentum are related since they both have a mass with a velocity. As the metal rod receives more heat, energy, its molecules will be surrounded by a greater number of Yaldans that will swarm around the molecular components. The propagated groups will have a greater momentum, with a frequency according to equation 2-2, and a wavelength according to equation 2-4 or 2-5. When the metal rod receives more heat energy from the external source, some of the molecular components on the surface will emit propagated groups with a greater number of Yaldans, gradually increasing the mass of the ejected groups, and as a result, the momentum of the propagated groups of Yaldans. This grouping momentum is seen when the metal rod first radiates red. As the momentum of the propagated groups grows, the rod turns orange, then becomes yellow. This is caused by the molecular components being surrounded by a greater amount of swarming Yaldans. As the metal rod continues to receive more energy, it releases the green, blue, and violet, along with the red, yellow, and orange, making the rod appear to emit white to the naked eye. This white light effect is due to the entire visible spectrum of light being released from the surface molecules of the heated metal rod. According to the varying momentum of each propagated group from each molecular component, due to the different amount of Yaldans contained within those propagated groups. The same phenomenon happens in the tungsten filament of a light bulb as it gradually becomes hotter, giving more momentum to the emitted groups of Yaldans from the tungsten element until it begins to emit propagated groups of visible light. Following will be a diagram and formulas to find the relation between the energy received and the density of Yaldans around the molecular components when at a steady state the energy gained equals the energy lost. In the diagram above, sigma is the average number of Yaldans per unit volume within a distance of 2s max. Following will be formulas to find the relation between the received energy from the external source and the energy of the propagated groups of Yaldans. According to Newton's second law, after taking the derivative for the equation above, let mg be the total mass of the Yaldans in one propagated group, and vp be the velocity of that propagated group. To find the total mass of the propagated group, the cross-sectional area of the molecular component times the displacement of the molecule will give the volume of coverage. This volume times the average density of swarming Yaldans around the atoms will give the number of Yaldans that will be consolidated into a propagated group. The number of Yaldans in the propagated group times the mass of single Yaldan will give the mass of the propagated group. After taking the derivative, after substituting the value of dmg into the previous equation, substituting the value for dmg into the equation for df, where a half of a period is taken since this will be considered as one full swing in one direction of the oscillating motion of the molecule. After substituting T into the equation for DF, performing integration, multiplying both sides of the above equation by 2S max. After simplifying, after the excited system maintains equilibrium, Substituting the value of s squared max from equation 2-1 into the equation above. After substituting eg into the equation. Then, according to equation 2-6, a higher density of swarming Yaldans will result in a higher amount of energy that was received. Then highly dense substances whose molecules have a larger radius, like the metal rod, will release propagated rays like a higher amount of energy. 
whereas gases under low pressure will have a lower value for sigma and R and will not be able to receive as much energy from an external source. Then gases that are under a low pressure won't be able to emit a wide range of propagated rays. The low pressure gases will be limited to propagate rays at a certain natural frequency according to equation 2.2. If the same low pressure gas becomes more condensed, a high pressure gas, then the sigma will increase. This high pressure gas will be able to receive a greater amount of energy from an external source and will then be able to propagate rays for a wide range. These propagated groups of Yaldens have two main characteristics. They are frequency and momentum within a certain amount of time. In the example regarding the visible light spectrum, which is detected by the human eye, the color for the visible light is due to the total momentum from the propagated groups of Yaldens within a certain time frame of Tp. See the following diagram. Propagated groups with a higher frequency will have a greater number of groups within that certain time frame. Neither the velocity, frequency, nor the total mass of a propagated group, but the summation of the total momentum of consecutive propagated groups within a certain time frame will designate color, as seen in equation 2a below. The brain will recognize a certain range of momentum from the propagated groups for each color as it strikes the eye nerves. This is the reason behind visible light appearing to have a defined set of colors. As seen in the previous example of the metal rod, visible light actually has a gradual blend of colors, momentum, from the propagated groups, but the brain partitions it into separate zones that are defined as red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. This is similar to the way that the brain partitions musical notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, even though the eardrum can vibrate with the frequencies in between these whole notes. The reason for visible light appearing to have a defined set of colors is due to the human brain, but in fact, the visible light and all other propagated rays are caused by the gradual variation, not step variation, of the momentum from the propagated groups as seen in the example of the metal rod and tungsten filament. The type of ray emitted depends on the total momentum from several propagated groups within a certain time period. Following will be a diagram with formulas describing the energy from a series of propagated groups. Let the total number of propagated groups within a certain time frame, Tp, be Ng. The momentum for one propagated group is Mg, and let the total momentum for all propagated groups within a certain time frame, Tp, be Mp. After substituting the value for Ng into the previous equation, multiplying both sides of equation 2a by the velocity of propagated ray, vp, to get a function for energy, ep, within a time frame of tp. Propagated momentum shift effect in regard to red shift. The color of the visible light can have a propagated momentum shift effect in empty space when a number of Yaldens contained within the propagated groups change, but the velocity of the propagated groups will remain the same according to the law of inertia. For example, if the propagated groups of green light were to decrease in mass, less number of Yaldens in the propagated group, while maintaining the same velocity, then it will become yellow light since less mass will mean less momentum, lower energy. Empty space is filled with these Yaldens with less density, sigma, in empty space than around matter. These Yaldens which fill the empty space move around linearly in all directions with an average speed of sy. That is faster than the velocity of the propagated visible light groups, the velocity of light. The Yaldens that exist in empty space are the same Yaldens that swarm around the atoms and they are also the same Yaldens that are contained in the ejected propagated groups. As the propagated light groups of Yaldens are released from the far stars and galaxies, they will come in contact with the Yaldens that exist in space as they travel through. As these traveling propagated groups come into contact with the Yaldens that exist in empty space, the propagated groups will lose some of their mass, Yaldens, proportionally to the distance traveled while maintaining their same velocity. The Yaldens that exist in empty space will knock off some of the Yaldens in the propagated group, thus decreasing the propagated group's total mass while maintaining the same velocity. This decrease in momentum will cause a propagated momentum shift effect. This is why the farther a galaxy is, the greater the shift in momentum. The redshift is caused by the existence of the Yaldens in empty space, not by the universe expanding uniformly from any point of observation. 
The same effect happens to the propagated light groups which leave the Earth. To find an equation that shows the ratio for the amount of momentum shift, RMS, in outer space, the area of coverage from a propagated group, AG, times the distance traveled will give a volume of space traveled by that propagated group. This volume multiplied by the density of the Yaldans in outer space, sigma, will give the total number of Yaldans that come into contact with the propagated group. This total number times the cross-sectional area of one Yaldan will give the total area of all Yaldans that come into contact with the Yaldans in the propagated group that travels through space. Then the distance between the area of the propagated group and the area of Yaldans that come into contact with the propagated group divided by the area of the propagated group will give a ratio for the amount of the momentum shift effect, redshift. Following will be a rough diagram with some formulas demonstrating this concept. Finding the number of Yaldans that will come into contact with a propagated group of Yaldans for a distance of one light year. Let be the number of light years that the propagated group travels and AS be the cross-sectional area for all the Yaldans that come into contact with the propagated group doing its travel through space. The ratio for the momentum shift, RMS, will be as follows. Then, substituting the value for AS in the equation above. Substituting the value for NLY in the equation above. Then, when, then it will not be possible to receive any kind of ray from that distance or beyond. According to the equation above, OIY and RY are fixed values. Then the amount of the momentum, redshift, for the propagated rays will depend on the number of light years traveled. The more light years traveled, then the greater the shift in momentum will be since they are directly proportional to each other. The sigma is also directly proportional to the ratio of the shift in momentum. Then the amount of the momentum shift will also increase based upon the density of the Yaldans in that region. According to equation 2-7, the universe would appear to be spherical in shape with the observer at its center. The radius of the sphere would be from the observer to when the value of RMS approaches zero.